<laughs> Let's revise experiments in motion in A-level physics. Just a little note that in exams we often encounter completely new situations and memorizing experiments is not sufficient. What is really important is understanding the principles behind them. So let's have a look at a few really important ones. Number one, finding the gravitational acceleration. This can be done in a number of ways and one of the classic ways is using this electromagnet and trapdoor setup. The basic idea is that we've connected all of this to a timer and as soon as we flip the switch then the electromagnet stops and then the ball drops and as it passes through the trapdoor it cuts off a part of a circuit and stops our timer. As always with experiments, first of all we need to write what we're going to be measuring. So we're going to measure H with a ruler. But we're measuring the time with the electromagnet connected to a timer. Typically also on mark schemes data logger is also accepted. We're going to vary the height H and measure the time T. As always we're going to take multiple readings of T and then we're going to average them. Notice that in this case we can directly apply the Seward equation S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. In this case S is just H and the acceleration will end up just being G assuming that we drop it from zero initial speed ut, the ut term will also vanish. This leads us with this equation that h is equal to a half gt squared and we can directly plot a graph of h against t squared. We'll be expecting a straight line through the origin. Notice that if the graph is just shifted up a little bit like so and all the points are shifted by the same amount then we're going to have a systematic error. If uh, we have a graph in which all the points are like scatter around a little bit more then we'll probably have quite a few random errors involved. Anyways we're going to draw the line at best fit and uh, if h is on the y-axis if t squared is on the x-axis what's left for our gradient m is half g. Rearranging we can find that g is equal to twice the gradient. Now one two in our arsenal of six markers measuring instruments is the use of light gates plus data loggers. We can use light gates to measure speed very very accurately also time if it need be. Here's a little sample experiment I've just kind of made up. So I have a block that we slide across some ramp and we can vary the angle theta. We can investigate the final speed in this location using a light gate. We could vary the angle in this case and measure the speed. We're going to measure the angle with a protractor. We're going to be measuring the speed with a light gate connected to a data logger. The way this actually works is that the light gate can actually register the time that the object spent in there and the data logger can calculate its speed at that precise location. As always we're going to take multiple readings and then average. One more thing that is really, really important, very often we get sample data in these questions and if we're given a graph of displacement against time or something like velocity against time and if this um, graph is not a straight line, if we wanted to find the acceleration at a certain point then we, needed to, we need to draw the tangent to that point. The velocity is the gradient of the tangent in a d against t graph and the acceleration will be the gradient of the tangent. It is vital that our gradient triangles are as large as possible to minimize any errors. Experiments in motion are just one part of the puzzle. To ensure that you get a maximum grade you need to revise materials as well and have a look at a very similar video in which I cover many of the experiments in material physics right over here.